Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. Now, Death Guard has been quite a feature of this channel over the last couple of years as I've built up quite a large Death Guard and Nurgle army. I've moved away from that for a while, I will be coming back to it soon. Uh, and someone had asked on an older video, can you show how you do a pallid hand Death Guard in my style? Because obviously the following along were there. I'm always up for a bit of a challenge, so I dug out an old Death Guard model and we're going to show you how I would do pallid hand Death Guard as one of the Vectorums. Now I'm starting off with a metallic base coat, so a lead belcher spray, and I find that's a fantastic base coat, both for time saving and for kind of damage effects that you'll see later on. So I've started off with lead belcher in this case, and then we're working on retributor armor for those brass areas. So all the brass detailing, the edging on the armor, some parts of the weaponry, those kind of things. You could start with a retributor armor spray, and put the silver details on first. And I've done that on my Death Guard models, either a lead belcher or a retributor armor spray, depending what details are on the model. Now, once you've worked on those metallic details, we're moving on to the core color of the Pallid Hand Death Guard. Now, the Pallid Hand stay very close to what the original Death Guard color scheme is. So I've done something very similar to this in my uh, Horus Heresy paint schemes. So we're starting off with Rakar flesh all over the rest of those armor panels, apart from the shoulders and knees, as you'll see later. Um, now, when you watch what I'm putting on the metallics, you notice I'm leaving patches around the bolts, maybe on some flat panels, where we're leaving that base coat showing through. And that's the beauty of the lead belcher uh, base coat, is that you can put on battle damage just as you're going. You'll also notice I've put some of that at the very top of that tentacle coming out of the body, and you'll see why later. So we've put that Rakar flesh over all the model, and now moving on to the Death Guard Green, the colour scheme that if you're doing a sort of pure Death Guard army, or the, the most common Death Guard army, this is what you would put over all the armour panels. But for here on the pallid hand, we're just doing it on the shoulder pads and on the knees. And you'll notice I'm doing exactly the same I did over the Rakar flesh on the armour panels, in that I'm leaving areas where the metal undercoat is showing through, so building up the battle damage without any serious effort. Now we've already put some of the Rakar flesh on the top of the tentacle that comes out of the stomach. We're just freshening that Rakar flesh up before we move into this next stage. So we're now taking Screamer Pink and we're painting that at the end of the tentacle and moving it into the area we've just freshened up that Rakar flesh on. I'm gonna do some super quick wet blending on this tentacle. So we put Rakar flesh at the top, we've then put the Screamer Pink at the bottom, then we're taking the brush with a tiny bit of uh, Rakar flesh on and just moving those paints in between themselves so that literally it blends in together. Now you can take a little bit more pink, a little bit more of the flesh color, whichever you like, and essentially you just merge those two colors together to give like a blended three or four along that tentacle. So super quick that blending, literally in 10 seconds. Now moving on to a bone color, and there's quite a lot on this model, but obviously this would vary depending on which model you pick, and I'm choosing to do the teeth on the chain sword or chain axe there um, in bone and other areas in the model. I do all my casings on my Death Guard guns and weapons in black, so I'm taking black and putting that around the axe. Now this could be an opportunity to do some real cool kind of stripes or however you want to do your army, but I like to keep a fairly muted uh, colour scheme. Flat brown moving on to the leather areas on the straps of the axes um, and any pouches and packs you might have on the model. You can also see on the back of the model there we did a little bit of wet blending on the tentacle on the rear. Now I'm I'm tying this model into the rest of my Death Guard army, so I'm taking that royal purple onto the cloth, and that's the colour scheme that ties all my Vectorums together, even though these are you know, pallid hand rather than typical standard Death Guard. Detailing the grenades with some red, and then moving in to a deep yellow, and we're doing this in the eye visors, but we're also putting this onto all the pustules and pieces all across the model, and this is gonna serve as a really good base coat for the uh, Nurgle effects we'll do later. And this is really where the, the color scheme verges away from that Horus Heresy scheme. So I said before, it's very similar to the Horus Heresy Death Guard scheme, but obviously the tentacles and the pustules and things are what sets it apart. So it is that little bit different. Now in terms of color schemes, I've, I've put the top left, all the paints I've been using as I've been going along. If you've not really followed, there will be a screen at the end showing all the, all the paints together. And then uh, if you want, check the links down below for all products that I use and that kind of thing, and drop a sub while you're down there if you're not already subscribed. Now, now it's really just touching up some details. We have been rough and ready, but there'll be parts where you might want to go back over with a gunmetal colour and just touch up some of those metallic areas that you might have uh, gone over. So that is all the base coats laid down. Now it's time for the uh, secret sauce that I use on a lot of videos. Uh, this is Vallejo Sepia Game Wash. Now any wash will do at this stage. If you watch all my videos, you know sometimes I will use the Games Workshop Sepia Wash, which isn't as dirty a wash, and you can get away a lot easier without doing anything else to the model after that wash stage. This Vallejo wash really is more of a grim dark effect. You can see how it's finished off here. Now, you could leave this model exactly as it is, but it will be very, very grim dark. I like somewhere in between the grim dark look 
and your traditional Games Workshop scheme. So this is why I like this Vallejo wash because it really dirties it down. And now it's time to lift it back up a little bit with some extra layers on top of this model. Now the beauty uh, I think of this wash is now you can then take the exact same colors you've already used across the model and go back over um, the areas you've taken. And because I use a wet palette, the paint is still stayed on the wet palette. It's a now very thinned down version of this paint and you're putting it over all the same areas but more as a highlight layer so we're not looking at putting this paint into all the gaps and cracks we're literally looking at putting it onto around three quarters avoiding all the crevices where the wash will have settled in and dirtied it up we're focusing more on the raised areas where the light will have hit and you can even you see here just run it along the armor panel joins like that and have a real nice in this case green highlight on that knee without using any different colors Moving it on again, the same there on the bone colour, uh, onto the shoulder pads. And you'll see I'm just putting this on the raised, very, very top areas uh, of the skulls that are on this pad. So using all the same colours as I said before. The only area I'm not putting any new uh, layer on is the brass. So I'm not using Retributor Armour at all. Uh, don't do any extra on there because this wash works really well to sort of dull down and age that brass armour. But the rest of the colours using exactly the same and going over in this format more or less um depending which the color is i don't use very much black i don't put much more on i don't put very much of the leather color back on because on different colors i think it needs a different level of effect so that's the beauty of that style of wash if you don't want to do this second stage you could skip it and have a really grim dark looking uh, army or use the games workshop sepia wash or another sepia wash that's not quite as dark and then you wouldn't need to do this stage but i really like the grim dark look and i like doing this second stage i think it really lifts the models now we're on to the technical side of the paint where we're doing some different paints we've not used so far we're taking nylac oxide which is a way of making the brass paint look like it's aged and oxidized over time like you see brass statues around go bits of green and i'm putting these onto all the rivet areas areas where there's chips and chunks taken out of that brass armor and it just gives a really nice aged effect now i want to make the armor uh, that kind of pallid armor look like it's being possessed and sort of nerdily around where these possession areas are so i'm taking two contrast paints we're using majors purple and we're using plague bearer flesh and i'm putting that majors purple down around all the kind of areas where mutations are coming out and things and building up a purpley layer and then i'm taking that plague bearer flesh and putting that in in other areas so really just playing at random i'm putting the plague bearer flesh more around the yellow pustules i'm putting the um the majors purple more around where the kind of teeth and things are growing and it really just changes the armor from being like an off-white to looking like really a bit more of a diseased gross kind of off-white if that makes any sense so again just playing and having a bit of fun with this armor panel to differentiate it from what i've done before and now the absolute must for any death guard on nurgle army nurgle's rot and i'm taking this and putting this on all those yellow pustules we painted earlier um, all those areas we've pre-prepared whether that's on the armor panels or whether that's on these drip patches coming off you know the chain axe and it really is just an absolute must for putting onto any death guard i also put it onto patches on the bases as you'll see later on and if you want to see them on the bases there are plenty of videos on the channel so that is the completed model so i hope you enjoyed that and i hope it made some sort of sense very different to my um, original kind of death guard army uh, and look check out my instagram for some closer pictures and more stuff and i will be coming back on to the death guard fairly soon so hope you enjoyed that if you did like comment subscribe all that youtube jazz and hopefully i will see you on another video